Power and presence. Power and presence is my essence. Been within me all along. What is there to be afraid of? Your light is. Your light is what we are made of. You know, you can even clap if it feels good to you. Life is in me, moving through me. Beyond questions, setting strong. Power and presence is my essence. Been within me all along, all along. Yeah. What is there to be afraid of? Your light, your light, your light is what we are made of. Let's do it from the top again. Oh, oh, oh. Move through me. Uh-huh. We are questions sitting strong. I don't believe that you mean it. Power and presence. It's our essence. It's my essence. Been within me hey, all along. along. What is there? What, what is there to be afraid of? What is there to be afraid of? Your light is what we So nice to be back with you all today. Thank you. Amen. Wrote this song with my friend Jamie Lula. Everything beneath the sun Breathes like a harmony Your perfection has begun Shining like a midnight sun Out of darkness I have come I see God in everyone Let me be an instrument Guided by and heaven sent May these grapes of pain for men Alchemize to love's content Ever be a sacrament Knowing God is my intent God 
let me know your name. Hold me in the same breath as your word. God, I feel you all around. Oh, how you astound me with your grace rolling like a thunder let me live my love out loud Standing for mankind and proud Baptized in a holy shroud Peace be still and know me now God is in all I have found God, let me know your name, hold me in the same breath as your word, God, I feel you all around, oh how you astound me with your grace. Turning like a prayer, let me know your turning like Ezekiel's wheel. Nothing like a kiss, seals your spirit out to come. Knowing what I'm here for, rowing on the distant shore, how you are flowing from the infinite with your prayer, God in everyone. Spinning like a prayer, let me know your Turning like you see you's wheels. Hold me in the sun. Nothing like the kiss seals the spirit I've become. Knowing what I'm here for. Rolling on the distant shore. How you are flowing from the infinite with your breath. God in everyone. Out of darkness I have come I see God in every one Good morning and happy Sunday and to those of all, to those of you online, hey, uh, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living San Jose, where we are transforming lives, building dreams, and revealing love. Where all that we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life by changing your mind. Welcome home. My name is Denny Reddy, and I am your host this morning. But more importantly, I am a member of this special community. Welcome to my spiritual home. Um, if this is your first time with us, welcome. I know how you feel. <laughs> and I invite you to uh, visit our concierge table after service where we have a welcome packet for you. And we have some knowledgeable souls who will be happy to tell you about who we are and what we do here. We also have welcome packets available as you exit in the foyer. Um, if you're watching us online, your moderator is Max Overland. And there's also lots of ways to stay connected to us when you're not in the building via our website or our Facebook page or our brand new mobile app. And now it's time to get to know your tribe. Please stand and introduce yourself to someone.
Good morning. My name is Lori Lynch, and I'm a prayer, a professional prayer practitioner here, and welcome to my spiritual home. So what we're going to do is we're going to hear a wonderful chant, and we're going to go into two minutes of silence, and then I'll give you a prayer. So welcome, sit back and relax, and let the words fall deep into your soul. so grateful I am so grateful I am so So in this wonderful, peaceful space, know with me, let that presence, that feeling, that knowing, that there's only one. By any name, God, source, infinite being, this whole existence is the one. 
feeling it deeply inside, I know this. And as I know this for myself, I know each person here, each person listening, each person is of this one essence. Not only here in this wonderful sanctuary, but everywhere. But right here and right now, this community is feeling this deeply and completely and letting all else fall away. And so I claim this great peace, this indwelling love, this indwelling presence welling up and guiding each of us to our highest and higher good by planting a seed greatness and all things come about by creating new thoughts each of us creates new facts the facts that we want to experience and I'm so grateful for the blessings, for the gratitude of each of the expressions here, for each one of us has come together to be part of this new beginning in each of our lives. And so I release this, my word, to the action of the law, knowing that each of us is touched, moved, and sustained by this presence. And this is absolutely so. And so it is. So if you would please join me for the affirmation. The expression of the one perfect life in me, as me, is now perfectly maintaining every atom, cell, organ of my body. My body is a divine dying of God. And no thing, no situation or condition can prevent its full and complete expression and and as me. Thank you. Dawn is breaking within you Can you feel the promise of the morn Your soul is waking to this moment A new day waiting to be born We are one in the devotion Naked in the truth for all time We are moved by the emotion We are one with the divine We are a portal to awakening We are living in God's love Feels like our hearts are finally opening Forgiveness rains down like a flood We are one in the devotion Naked in the truth For all time We are moved By the emotion We are one With the divine Standing in the light Arms held open wide Emerging from a night Fears all set aside No day quite as bright No place left to hide Everything is right And here we will abide We are one in the devotion Naked in the 
the truth for all time. We are moved by the emotion. We are one with the divine. We are drenched in the devotion. Naked in the truth for all time, we are moved by the emotion. We are one with the divine. We are one with the divine. We are one. Good morning. Good morning. And to live uh, live stream. Hey. Okay. So uh, you guys are very lucky because uh, I get to work out all my kinks <laughs> at the nine o'clock service. <laughs> so I'm fully available and present for you all. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot my notes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, talk louder. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that last time too. Thank you, Masako Gordon. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this morning, I want to talk about insights and how that has really made a huge contribution in my life, a uh, profound one at that. And uh, so uh, I have discovered uh, three things about uh, insights. Uh, and uh, one is that, uh, I don't know, I'm going blank. Is that weird? Okay. Um, so one is that when I have these aha moments in my life or these God-given insights, I take it as a sign of an invitation from God. So it is knocking on my door and say, hey, come on out. I am uh, requesting that you be a channel of my love, my grace, and my healing. So in the acceptance of that, now my work begins. So the human me uh, is, uh, is required that I be a demonstration of God's grace and love and healing powers. And uh, it is completely, completely remarkable because uh, one of the features in this, uh, this demonstration is that I get to surrender to the mystery of the unknown and have this grace work through me. Um, so I get to really see uh, this, the, the spirit come through me and it works magic and miracles in my life. And I am privileged to be a witness of that from that very moment. Um, and uh, so that was the second piece. And the last piece is what do I get out of all this experience? And for me, one is that I am returned to that I am the source of my love and my happiness. It doesn't depend on the props, that those seductive props that life sometimes bring up, uh, like money, a relationship, a new job. You know, you fill in the blanks. Uh, the, uh, the other piece is, uh, for me, the experience of it is uh, like going for a walk, in, you know, with nature. And uh, in that moment for me, it's everything is complete and whole. And I have nowhere to get to, no demands on me. There's no competition. I'm just happy to be alive and in that moment. And I'm fulfilled in that moment. Uh, the last piece, and this is a piece that especially talks to me. And uh, as I do these practices and I see uh, grace manifesting through me, uh, I start to gain inner strength. 
and it keeps deepening and deepening. And with that deepening, I am also an expansion of the world of, that I can make a difference in. So thank you. So good morning. good morning. I'm Reverend Tony Cormier. I'm the Director of Youth and Family. And on behalf of Dr. David, who is speaking at Centers for Spiritual Living Santa Rosa, for Dr. Edward, he says good morning. So make some changes. A couple of months ago, Reverend Susan sent me an email. And she said, oh, would you like to speak on April 27th? So my first reaction was like, wow. But then I thought about it, I said, oh, wait now. I've never done this by myself. I won't have Reverend Valerie. So then I got a little nervous, and then I heard it's yours to do. But in true Tony fashion, I just shut down my email, didn't respond. <laughs> so some time goes by, and I'm about to have a meeting with Reverend Susan. So I want her to think I'm ignoring her. So I go back to my email so I can respond. But for some reason, I couldn't find the email. <laughs> now, mind you, I have about 15,000 emails in my, 100 emails in my inbox, which is another story. But I thought, hmm, maybe I created that. So the next day, when I go to meet with Reverend Susan, I said, hey, before we start, I have a question. Don't judge me. Don't laugh at me. But did you send me this email? She goes, oh, yeah, I thought you responded. You're on for April 27th. <laughs> So I said, oh, okay. And one of my things is I want to play full out. I want to be seen and show up and all that good stuff. So I said, okay, I can do this. So I go home, and I go on our website, csl.org, to find out the talk title. Make some changes. So in Science of Mind, it's all about the affirmative. Our words have power. Tony and change is like oil and water. So I think, okay, how do I get out of this? And I thought, <laughs> I couldn't tell David and Susan, oh, I, I don't do change. I can't talk on the 27th. <laughs> that just wouldn't bode well for me. <laughs> so again, I'm not going to think about it right now. So go ahead on in life. So some time goes by, and then I keep getting, it's yours to do. And at the same time, I was taking an online class with a minister in Southern California, Reverend Gary Kubler. And he coined this acronym G-O-M-U, GOMU. And it stands for the God of my understanding. And it's not a matter of your GOMU being outside of you, it's within you. But I invite you just to take a minute to think about what is the God of your understanding? So when I did that, I was feeling good. I'm like, oh, okay, my God is loving, is compassionate, is always with me, is guiding me. I'm pumped up now. I can do the talk on the 27th. So I start planning my talk, and I know exactly how it's going to go. Mistake one. So <laughs> time goes by, and I'm sitting in a meeting, and someone says, oh, How's your recruitment going for youth and family? So with a bit of drama, I take a pregnant pause and I say, dismal. <laughs> so some said, well, what is it you need? Another said, well, you'll have to talk about it on Sunday. So when I heard, what is it you need, it hit me funny. But I'm not that quick wit person. I have to kind of sit with it and be alone with it to see what's really up for me. And then the others who were saying, oh, you need to talk about it on Sunday, part of me was like, well, I've already done that. That's not mine to do. But on the outside, mm-hmm, thank you. Great idea, uh-huh. <laughs> so as I sat with why it felt funny when they said, what is it you need, what came up for me was youth and family wasn't about Tony. It was about community. 
And then I thought, well, how do I engage the membership in youth and family? And Spirit says, you don't, because it's about community. Well, now I'm like, wait, wait. I'm going to talk on change on Sunday. My piece of the pie is youth and family. It's not community. That's not mine to do. Spirit says, it's community. So I was like, okay, what is this? So then I thought, how did I get to youth and family? And before Reverend Valerie stepped down from it, she said, you should do it. So once I finished laughing, I said, look, no. I don't have the personality or the patience for it. I'm far too busy. And I don't have kids. Youth and family has nothing to do with me. Now, you remember the cartoons when they had the little bubble over the head? At this point, it would say, ego, ego, ego. So I thought about youth and family, and I thought, well, maybe. And for my day job, I spend time with people at the end of their lives. And it's been really rewarding because they have such wisdom, and they're kind of discovering, who am I at this point? Because they don't have that identity of their former careers, and so they're looking for meaning in their life. And then I bought, thought about children. They're kind of discovering, who am I with this great enthusiasm? So I thought, well, maybe youth and family is mine. So I become the youth and family director. Now I have all these expectations and how it's going to go. Ego. And it doesn't happen that way. So one day, Paul Witt, who's one of our licensed practitioners, he says, you know, Tony, I think it would be really good if we had the grandparents in the community read to the children in the nursery. And I thought, wow, that would be good. And then I thought, wow, how interesting. Here I am taking over youth and family, and I didn't think about this whole population of people, our seniors and elders. And I thought, wow, both ends of the spectrum just want to be seen and valued and part of the community, like we all want. So then I went back to the busyness, too busy. And as Americans, we're very busy, that's true. But then I thought about that song by Harry Chapin, Cats in a Cradle, where the dad was too busy for the son. And then the line that says, I'm going to grow up and be just like you, dad. And then when dad retires and he has all the time in the world for the son, but the son's too busy now because he has his family. And I thought, wow, is life about community and relationships? And when I spend time with my seniors, I haven't had one yet to say, oh, I wish I was on another committee. I wish I had planned one more this or that. It really becomes about relationships. And when you think about our young people, it's about the relationships that scope who they are and shape who they are. And then when I thought, well, I don't want to talk about community. It's not mine. What came up for me was spirit was asking me to be bigger than I think I can be. And that was scary. Because while I want to be seen and show up, I want to control how that looks. But when you're on the spiritual path, it's about surrendering. It's not about controlling anymore. And sometimes I get caught up in the end point where I need to know how to get there. But on this path, it's one step at a time. So while I thought, oh, make some changes, I'm going to talk about this, the Spirit's like, no, that's not what needs to be said. And so it's about being able to surrender to that inner voice and listen to that guidance and kind of let go of how I think things should be. Because when I get caught up in my thoughts, the chaos and madness start. And so when I thought, well, how do I stand in integrity? I stand in being who I am. I stand being connected to my go mu and know that the divine intelligence dwells within me. That's what this journey is about. And it's about community. I haven't seen one person who's having fun in community say, oh, I need to go isolate now. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> Doesn't happen. And are we not all here to be in relationship? You know, when I'm with my seniors, I haven't seen one person who says, oh, yeah, my peer's coming to support me now. It's a younger person. 
And when you see children who fall and get a boo-boo, they don't ask their playmate, oh, come, look at my knee. They want mom, they want an adult, they want to be comforted. And so while, yes, there's a lot of busyness in life, I think this is an opportunity to say, what's mine to do? How can I be a part of? How can I surrender to that still small voice within me that's saying, this is yours to do? And see, the thing about our philosophy, we have dominion. We can listen or not. And if we don't listen, we know. So it's all about choice. There are no have-tos in life. But how am I choosing to show up on this day? Ernest Holmes is all about change your thinking, change your life. And in our book for the year, let me do a Reverend David. A new design for living, which is available in our bookstore. Today's talk <laughs> was um, on chapter five, make some changes. And Ernest Holmes talks about the cup with the murky water. And each time you just put a drop of clear water, a drop of clear water, eventually you have a clear cup of water. Now, it may not happen instantaneously. And sometimes we want that right now fix. But if we stick with it, if we commit to it, if we know, yes, this is the way, you get that clear cup of water. But again, it's being willing. And isn't life about the journey? It's not about the end point. But are we really being present to each moment? Because in the song, well, not now, later, not now, later. But for all of us, we only have this moment. We don't know about later. So how do we live the best life in this moment? And also to recognize that each and every person here and on live stream, we're here by divine appointment. There are no accidents in God. So when we think, well, who am I? You're the divine made manifest. And it's a matter of do you recognize it? Are you, you know, we talk about to the degree that we become conscious of it. How conscious are we of the Christ-like self that's within us? Or are we thinking, well, you know, things have happened. And I thought about the Gomu and the divine that's within. What is the relationship to it? Is it like an acquaintance? I know it's there. Don't really mess with it. Is it a committed relationship? Where I'm exactly in alignment with it, knowing my truth? Or is it like separation? Something's happened and now I don't know about it. When I thought about speaking by myself, I thought, ooh, I have a tendency to rock when I get nervous. And then I talk super fast. And then my voice goes up about 10 octaves where I'm kind of calling the dogs. <laughs> but I thought, but what if I sit here in my power, knowing who I truly am? I bet I could talk with poise and confidence and in a pleasing tone and not a dog calling tone. <laughs> Ernest Holmes also talks about the fight or flight response. And he says, yes, that happens. But again, if we be still and know, those feelings dissipate. And then we have the clarity on where we want to go. But when we're not grounded, when we're not connected to source, we fight or flight. And again, we're at choice. And it's kind of like Proverbs 3, 4. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Because when I lean on my own understanding, it's not pretty. <laughs> and it's tiring <laughs> and exhausting. You know, so again, we're at choice. And if we're going to put out energy, why not the positive energy? And then when I was thinking about speaking up here, I don't know if it's still on, but I thought about the program Meet the Press and Face the Nation, when it's really just people talking about their opinions. Not that they're right or wrong. They believe in themselves, and they're getting paid. Political pundits, they get paid to talk, express their opinion. We all have an opinion. Why don't we all express what we're thinking? And I'm just saying this is my experience, because we all have an experience. And why not share that? Because it says where two or more are gathered, it is done. There's a power in that. There's a synergy in that. 
And to know, wow, we can create the life we want, that there's no limitations in God. It's not for this part of the room and not that part of the room, but it's for all of us that we don't have to struggle if we believe. Earlier, I was talking to someone, and they said they put in a bid for a house, that they were selling their house, and they said how much they want it, and it was much above asking price. And she's like, oh, my God, yes. And then she thought, ooh, that was way too high. And then the agent came back and said, oh, they took the offer. But the next day, they canceled it. And she was like, I canceled my, I canceled it myself because I was excited, but then I negated it. And the universe responds like that sometimes. So we can't doubt it. We have to know. Because if we don't know, spirit can't give it to us. If we don't believe, how are we going to have it? But it's when we know and with that clarity. And sometimes you hear that expression, fake it till you make it. It's like, oh, is that good? But it's like, just trust and know. Don't believe in what you're seeing if it's not what you want. But just know, yes, I can have the home I want, the partner I want, the life I want, the job I want. But if you think, well, I want that, but it won't happen, the universe responds, okay. You know, the universe isn't going to say, well, I know that's not what they mean, so I'll do it anyway. (laughs) And if you think about how many thoughts we have per day, are our thoughts for our highest good? Or are are we stuck on what it is we don't want, but yet keep experiencing and wondering what God's doing? No. What are we doing? What is our intent? Where is our attention? And it's not, one thing about this path, it's not a matter of, oh, I've hit enlightenment. I don't have anything else to do. (laughs) No. (laughs) Because I'd be there. It's a daily thing. And that's why we talk about our spiritual practices and being mindful, and sometimes it may mean not talking, you know, because everything you're putting out there is energy. And if you say, well, I don't, I just can't feel this, just be quiet then. Just be quiet, be in the stillness, because when you are quiet, that's when you hear spirit talking to you. But you have to be quiet, you have to be willing, you have to be open. And I know Dr. David talks about allowing. Are you willing to allow all your good in your life, knowing that each one of us is worthy just because of who we are? Thank you. Let's pray. So I just invite us all just to take a deep breath in. And in this moment, I just recognize the presence, knowing that there's one life, one power, one presence, known by many names, and in this moment, I choose to call it God. And I'm knowing that the life of God is my life, the lives of each and every person here, and the lives of each and every person on live stream. And in this moment, I am affirming that everyone is in alignment with the divine intelligence, with the gomu of their understanding, knowing it is our divine birthright to have financial abundance, perfect health, divine right relationships. This is our divine birthright. So I'm just giving thanks for the Students for Spiritual Living, San Jose, knowing that it is a beacon of love and light, knowing that it is a loving community where the youngest member to the oldest member is seen, valued, and loved. This is the truth. And for this and so much more, I simply say, thank you, God. I release my word to the universal law. And if anything I've said resonates with you please help me anchor this prayer by saying and so it is will the ushers please come forward
and we will do our offertory statement, giving statement. Joyful surprises offer themselves to me all the time, and I accept them. In ever increasing good is mine. I love to receive it. I love to share it. I love being alive. Unfold your heart. Relax your senses. Yeah. Feel every part. You ain't got a thing to fear. Looks like love is growing here. So take your guard and let it down. Go deeper still until you come unwound Unbound Breathe every breath yeah. Release your cringe Love without waiting Without waiting, slowly unhinge. You ain't got a thing to fear. Looks like love's growing here. Take your guard and let it down. Go deeper still until you come unwound. Unbound. You can stop waiting for love to find you. Look inside your heart. Love's already who you are. It's already who we are. Yeah. So lift up your voice. Oh. Up now, now, let it be heard. Let it be heard. Tell me your story. Tell it to me. Don't leave out a word. Not a word at all. I think I have been there too. I'm a seeker just like you. You ain't got a thing to fear. Looks like love that's growing here. So take your guard and let it down. Go deeper still until you come unwound. Unbound. Lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, down, down. Unbound. Unfold your heart. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Doris. Whoops, I'm Doris. <laughs> and I, I'm at first service, I called myself the wrap up committee. And then I got so comfortable up here that I was told to be the highlight committee. <laughs> so I'm going to be the highlight committee and just tell you a very few things that we truly, truly want to bring to your attention. And one of the very first things is you probably saw the uh, survey that was in your bulletin. Complete that because the Anim Connection Group would really like to, to poll the um, audience and there will be people at each of the exits with baskets that you can put your survey in. Okay? Now, 
our marvelous singer has CDs for sale afterwards. And I, I happen to know, having, having heard him here, that he was touching a lot of people in our, in our community. Now, gourmets for God. The bidding is continuing. And uh, d people sometimes get a little bit eager. They're out there pushing and shoving, trying to get their names on that list, adding their $2 incremental bid, checking back and seeing if they can add more. So please go out there, get your, get your bulletin if you have, if the, the catalog, if you don't have it yet, get your number, bidding number, and then start signing up. The most wonderful thing is, is that there are a lot uh, not a lot, but there are several family-friendly events. So that's made a lot of my friends exceptionally happy. Now, there's also, now, 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 the, there's the, uh, the introduction to the Landmark Forum this afternoon. I do want to make sure that I mention that. And then coming up this Wednesday for the spiritual practices, uh, that, that, that free Wednesday night program, this Wednesday is called Devotion and Ritual, Honoring Your Ancestors, and the guest facilitator is our own Michelle Jordan. Now, what Michelle has definitely asked is that you bring, if you're planning on coming, do bring pictures of some of your ancestors. Not an album's worth, you understand, but do bring a few of them with you. And then our dear dad, Dr. David, is going to be doing another coaching workshop shortly. This one's going to be on relationships, and it's going to be done in tandem with Sarah Moselle. So you, that will start on the 7th of May, and I believe it's in your bulletin. Now, the one thing that I, because it's coming up very quickly, and it has a special effect for today. You all saw the one on uh, Gabriel Cousins, the spiritual, the nutrition. And since he is so widely known, um, they're offering just today a $25 ticket price. After today, it goes up to $40, and then at the door it will be 50 so if you're even thinking closely about um, going, I'd say get your ticket today because you could probably sell it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I could not resist. The only <laughs> – oh, dear me. Dear Lord, i got to pray. <laughs> And the only other thing, oh, the, you know, the other thing that's really pretty important is, again, an exciting kind of thing, the vibrations of excellence for the young women that will be offered by Kelly Jackson on soon. May 18th. May 18th. Thank you so much. Other than that, I, you've got your bulletin. There are all these wonderful things. Not one is truly more important than the other. I just wanted to be my own little yellow highlighter here. And uh, tell you to also look ahead where we can have, you know, Georgia Prescott is the minister, the founding minister, I believe, at the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living, and they are bringing their play authentic voices to us in June. So we've got so much on the agenda, so much on the calendar, and I am so grateful. So that's it. See you. So before we have our moment of benediction, for all the practitioners who's available for prayer after service, could you please move over to the windows? And for the people on live stream, if you would like prayer, please send your phone number to the live stream moderator, Max, and someone will call you within 15 minutes after service ends. So if everyone will please stand and take the hand of the person on your left and on your right. Won't you know with me that you are never alone, that God is where you are, where you are right now, and all you need to do is look within, wherein you will find that you are guided, sustained, directed, and inspired by a source that only knows good. 
Joyously let us make use of these gifts in all that we think, say, and do. And so it is. And please repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening as me right now. It's this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my relationships. Life is in my finances. I see it. I think it. I feel it. I believe it. I accept it. I express it. Just the way that it is. And just the way it is not. Thank you, life.